Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me, uh, Money with Mocha. My name is Michelle. I feel like I need to do a little bit more of an intro because last time I didn't. Um, my name's Michelle. I'm 47. I have been teaching. I just finished my 21st year teaching, and this past year I decided to work part time. So, my money management strategy is kind of three people meshed in one. So first is Dave Ramsey. Um, I was a loyal follower for years and years and years and years. Unfortunately though, his method to me, it just doesn't feel very sustainable. Like y'all, I would be in a grocery store with all them little envelopes. I use scrapbooks, so they all cute and stuff, a mess. I'm holding up the line cause I'm trying to figure out, is this from the grocery? Is this from the household? It was just a mess, but I like some of his concepts. Um, so in regards to him, I'm going to be doing like sinking funds and the zero based budgeting. So that's where I get from him. Then I move on to the fire movement, which is actually what sparked my part time working because I was reading about them and just this whole movement. And I was like, hmm, what if instead of just working, working, working for the next 10 years so that then I could retire a little early? Oh, excuse me. Instead, why don't I just work part time now and see if I can make the money work? So for me, because I've been teaching so long and have a couple degrees, what I make part time is about mm, it's about forty seven, forty eight thousand. And I was like, you know what? Some people live off of that. So it's just me and my son. So I was like, we should be able to pull this off. And so, um, and I still get benefits, so that's great. And then the third person who's kind of influenced uh, my money management is Ramit Sadie. He um, is known for I Can Teach You To Be Rich. And he has this really cool concept of money dials. And so I started to think, okay, I'm gonna turn up my money dial for things that really are important to me and I'm gonna turn it down for stuff that's not. And so that's the combination. That's kind of what I'm working towards. My main goal is to create sustainable money habits so that I do not find myself in debt again. Because if you're like me, you've been on this roller coaster. So like you laser focus, you know, you pay off debt, then a year, two, six months, whenever you're back in debt, you're beating yourself up because you're like, dang, what happened? So I think hopefully now I'm trying this out. You're on this journey with me. We'll see if it works is I want to create sustainable money habits. So while yes, for all my money, folks, I'm going to be paying more in interest. I know, but I want to be building some habits so that, you know, I'm not back in debt in two years or three years, or I'm always on the edge that I'm going to overspend and that kind of stuff. So one of the cornerstones of what I do is I love habits y'all. Everybody knows me as a minimalist. I wear pretty much the same thing every day. So I love routines. I love systems. And so that's the goal. Okay. So yesterday when I was at the laundromat, I was like, you know, I got to get a handle on this money. And the one thing that's really standing in the way of if I'm going to be able to sustain this working part time on this part time income is my monthly expenses. Right. Because technically that's, you know, that's dictating every month. And I realized, you know what, when I looked at my monthly expenses, my credit cards, it's almost like a thousand dollars a month just in minimum payments. So I said, you know what, I'm going to focus on that. How can I get that down? And so to create a sustainable system, um, I've decided I'm going to do the credit card that has the highest monthly payment. That's the one I'm going to pay off first. Why? Because that's the thing that's jeopardizing my ability to work part time is, you know, the more I can pay it off, the lower those monthly payments. And then it gives me just a little bit more room to breathe. So before I'm even getting into that, though, I was like, OK, why am I in debt? Why am I in debt in the first place? I need a money plan. So if you see me looking down, that's what I'm looking at. So yesterday I was at the laundromat and I decided, you know, what, I'm going to do some habit stacking. Shout out to Carter Sullivan. Love her, love her, love her. I feel like she's like my unofficial sister in Canada. I'm in the United States. So she does these money videos. She does these little resets. And I love her because she really walks you through the logistics. Because I feel like a lot of times when we watch people, they're like leaving out stuff that I think 
would be helpful. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to try to do this on a weekly basis. And so what do I already do on a weekly basis where this is not like something else to do that then I'm not going to really get to anyway. So every Friday I wash clothes every single Friday. I go to the laundromat. I wash clothes. What do I normally do at the laundromat? I'm on my phone. So I decided, you know what? Instead of being on my phone yesterday, I pulled out my little notebook and I start writing down what my goals are for this month, because I feel like another one of my issues when it comes to budgeting is in my mind, I kept thinking of this like ideal month instead of looking at each month as its own. I kept looking at it as like an ideal month and every month I'm failing. Like literally I was like, oh, I want to spend 500 on discretionary spending. But once I did my money plan, I realized that's not even realistic. I spend more than that. So I'm going to walk you through it. So the first question I asked myself yesterday was, how do I usually spend my money? And I came up with seven categories. OK, so first one's food. Next is laundry. Three is self maintenance. I really don't like that name. So if somebody can come up with a better name for self maintenance, I would be so grateful. Four is takeout. Five is social. Six is aromatherapy. I love all things aromatherapy. You can see that candle behind me. You can see beside it, there's a, a essential, what's it called? Essential oil, a diffuser, oil diffuser. I have incense. I have wax warmers. I just, I love aromatherapy. And then the seventh one is other or random. So once I came up with that, then I said, okay, let's look at how much am I spending or what I like to spend in each of these categories. So the first one is food. I go to the grocery store every Sunday. So then I said, okay, let's see how many Sundays are in July. Cause I'm not going to be doing an ideal month budget. I'm doing just July. So for July, there's five. So that means five times 50, that's $250. So I need $250 to cover my grocery runs Two laundry. I already told you I go every Friday. I spend about four fifty every week at the laundry. So that's $22.50. OK, so let me turn to my next page, self maintenance. So every month I do waxing, underarm waxing, and then I do a pedicure. Um, waxing's 20, pedicure is 60. I usually only get pedicures once a month. Waxing, it kind of is like every three weeks. So I budget it for this month. I'd probably be two waxings. So that's a hundred dollars. Takeout. I put 150. I know that's high. I know it's high, but I don't cook a lot. And so I want to create realistic budgets because 150, I have a really good chance of staying in, in that realm. Social, I put 50. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of stuff planned this month, but you never know. So I did 50. Uh, six, I did aromatherapy. I did about $45 for that because every month I buy like this one candle, it's almost like a manifestation candle and it's for the month. They smell so good. That's actually um, one of them in the back burner. Now I always buy incense and then sometimes I'll just be out and find a random candle. Just so you know, I don't know if you know this, all these candles, amazing. Wasn't expecting it. So good. I did get one dud, but my other three candles from all these, like aesthetically, they look so pretty. Plus they smell good. So I budgeted 45 for that. And then for my final category is other. And I did 150. Now, normally it probably wouldn't be that high, but here's the stuff I put in that category. If I have to mail something, if I need ink for my printer, school stuff, because I'm a teacher, we go back to school at the end of the month, books, um, our dog, he gets a bath and his nails done, gifts, and then lottery. Now I know. When some of y'all hear lottery, you're going to be like, I cannot believe that somebody who is really serious about trying to get out of debt is really having the audacity to talk about the lottery. But I am because remember, I said I want to create sustainable habits and I like to gamble. Now, remember, I talked about those money dials. Now, I don't have as much money to gamble with as maybe I would like, but I'm not going to cut that out because I want to create, again, sustainable money habits. And if I do this deprivation, kind of like a diet, if I do that deprivation, that's not going to help me. So I throw my lottery um, stuff in there. All right. So my next question I ask is how will I pay for each category? Because that's important. Now, 
I'm really, really, really trying to track my spending and at the same time build sustainable habits. So what I've decided is that I'm going to do a combination of cash and credit card. Now, I have done where I tried to do all credit card. That did not work for me. Hence the reason why I'm in credit card debt. Um, I've tried to do all cash. That just doesn't seem sustainable and it's very cumbersome. So for food, I'm going to do credit card. At that way, I can really see at the end of the month, do I really spend $50 at the grocery store or on a regular? Do I spend less? Do I spend more? Next is laundry. I'm going to do, that one's kind of easy. I'm going to do cash. And so what I did yesterday was I literally, even though I budgeted $22.50, I just did $25 when I was there yesterday. I got me a little um, like makeup bag. It was a little one from um, Dollar Tree put my quarters in there. So now I'll have it. So now in theory, those quarters are going to last me till the end of the month. We'll, we'll see. I haven't tried this before, but I think so. Uh, self maintenance is also going to be cash because, um, both places I go to, um, one place, the pedicure, you actually get a discount. If you pay cash, I think you save five or 10% plus I tip in cash. And that one's just, I want to do cash. Uh, now for takeout, I'm going to do credit card because I want to see do how much do I normally spend on, you know, ordering out? Is it is it way more than 150? Is it way less than 150? I want to see. Uh social is going to be cash. And here's the reason why. I don't really socialize a whole lot, but I want to see where is that $50 landing? Like do I need to give myself more room, less room? Is 50 okay? And I feel like if I do cash, then if I should run out before the end of the month, then I can see those purchases like on my credit card. So I'm starting with that with cash. Aromatherapy is going to be credit card because who knows, $45 might be too much. Like I really am not 100% sure on what I spend on candles and incense because normally when I get my incense, I kind of get them like in bulk. So I don't know if I'm really spending, you know, $45 a month on aromatherapy every month, but we'll see. And then my other it's going to be a combination of credit card and cash. It's only $20 in cash. Don't ask me why. Um, I felt like I should just have some cash because you just never know. And I like to tip in um, cash. So like if I go to Smoothie King or something, I just like to tip in cash. Okay. So the next question I asked is, what will be my system for getting cash and paying off the credit card? So, because I feel like that's like, you know, a little piece of information that people don't share, but it matters. Like, how are we going to do this? And so um, love James Clear with Atomic Habits. He talks about I need to reread it because I read it like years ago. But anyway, he talks about you have to have a habit before you can get better at it. And in order to create good habits, you want to reduce the amount of friction. So I'm like, what's the easiest thing to do? So what I've decided is I get paid once a month. So every month I'm just going to withdraw that 200, which is about how much I need in cash. Now for my credit card maintenance, I have two things that I'm kind of pondering. One, what card am I going to use? And two, how am I going to pay it off? So how am I going to pay it off? I have figured that one out. I've decided that when I'm at the laundromat on Friday, stuck in my habits, I'm going to, instead of being on my phone, I'm actually going to look at my spending for the previous week and I'm going to see how I'm doing. Then what I've decided to do is from my main checking account, I bank with Bank of America, I have moved 570 into a savings account because when I added up, let me see how much was it, 770. So when I added up my discretionary spending for this month, it equals 770. You subtract 200 and it gets you 570. So I'm going to move 570 over to my savings in Bank of America. Then what I'm going to do is now I have to decide, well, which card am I using? So right now, the cards that I have are Total Rewards, Capital One Travel, Bank of America Travel, Bank of America Cashback, and then Chase Cashback. So I have five cards here. Now, these are not all my credit cards, which you'll see in a second, but these are the ones that right now I'm trying to see which ones am I going to keep ones or maybe one. So because I like to travel so much, I really feel like I should do a travel rewards card in opposed to a 
cashback one. So that kind of eliminates the Bank of America one and the Chase one. So those aren't going to be possibilities. So I'm down to my three Bank of America travel, Capital One travel or total rewards. Total rewards technically is only really helpful if I'm doing like Caesars properties. And while I definitely do oftentimes when I travel, I'm going to casinos. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be the best bang for my buck. So I'm really on the fence. Is it going to be Bank of America travel or Capital One travel? I think I'm leaning towards Bank of America travel. Um, and the reason why I'm leaning towards that is twofold. One, it gives me a little bit more options. Capital One Venture Card. I watched a bunch of like YouTube videos about it. It kind of limits like the airlines you can use as well as the hotels you can use. So I would rather do Bank of America because it gives me a little more option. Also, because since that's my main banking account, like when I log in, I can actually see that credit card balance. So I feel like that one and as far as, you know, habits and just friction, that one's just easy because what I can do is every week I could see how much I've spent on it and then I could just transfer that over from the money I put into the savings. So I really think I'm going to do Bank of America um, travel. All right. So now my uh, last thing is that I'm going to do this every single Friday. Now, because this is my first month of doing this, I realize that I might be off. Like maybe I spend way more money than this. I don't know. Um, this is a good month to try it because I'm actually on vacation for the first three weeks. I don't have any big things planned. So it's a good time to kind of play around and tweak this. So I do have an account at 53rd or 5th, 3 or I always mess up the name of that bank, but I do have that bank. I recently um, opened a checking account there. And the reason why was because I was like, okay, I love to do scratch offs. I love the lottery. What am I going to do with this money? So what I do is it's contained in my grocery store. So because I go to the grocery store every week, um, I just cash in my little scratch offs if I've won. And then I immediately deposit that money into that account. So what I'm thinking is that's going to almost be my buffer account. So if I, you know, have miscalculated and I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, 770 really actually was not enough. I needed 800, I need 850, then I'll have a little bit of cushion in there. I'm hoping that it's less. So we'll see. Okay. I know that was a lot. Thank you so much for listening. And my next video, I will actually break down my debt and how I plan to uh, pay it off. Until next time, have a great day and don't forget, be grateful. Bye-bye.